I just can't believe I did that. I, I'm such an idiot. Phil Mickelson, 2006, winged foot. Yes, it's U.S. Open week in September. Very odd. Uh, hardly a U.S. Open, if you will. There was no qualifying. It was a selection process. But obviously, COVID's changed everything. Because, yeah, I was signed up for U.S. Open qualifying. Um, would have been in May. And then you're kind of sitting watching. And it's like, oh, no, this, is, uh, this isn't happening. Oh, it's postponed. Oh, oh, now, oh, it's going to happen in, later in the year. Oh, wait, no. Now there's no qualifying. We're just going to select people for the U.S. Open. So hardly a U.S. Open. But it's still the U.S. Open, and it's at Wingfoot. It's going to be amazing to watch. And speaking of the U.S. Open, for those watching the video, I'm wearing a pretty dope U.S. Open hat with some skull and crossbones on it from Imperial. Because uh, uh, Short Par 4, they have so much U.S. Open merchandise. Because obviously with no fans, all that merchandise that was made is... <laughs> it's no one. There's no one on site to get it, so some companies got access to it, like Short Par Four, and they have a U.S. Open store running all week. New Era, Imperial, Forty Seven, just so many cool companies. Polo, they got all the shirts. Uh, Ralph Lauren shirts that the volunteers were meant to wear. You can get access to those. So I'm gonna be wearing that stuff all week, and um, it will be linked below if you want to go to the Short Par Four website and check out all the awesome U.S. Open swag. There's some really dope dope hats so i would say if you're if you're a winged foot fan if you're a golf fan if you're a u.s open fan this is a great opportunity to get some some swag to commemorate arguably the weirdest u.s open in uh, in modern times uh, no fans no open qualifying just a selection process but it's at the historic awesome beautiful difficult amazing winged foot i mean i'm not going to make any predictions here golf is uh is in good hands right now. Dustin Johnson's playing amazing golf. John Rahm's playing amazing golf. So I think it wouldn't be shocking to see them up there. I would love to see Phil Mickelson win this U.S. Open because, I mean, how cool would that be? Um, 14 years later, redemption, and it would be his Grand Slam. But hey, let's just watch and enjoy another major. I mean, the PGA Championship was pretty great, so... Um, let's enjoy the U.S. Open, even though without fans, it's not as amazing as it could be, but it's still going to be pretty good. And speaking of the PGA Tour, the Safeway just wrapped. And like I said in episode one, these events are where you're going to see a lot of names you don't really know, names you don't recognize, or some some journeymen, if you will, a lot of people that this whole notion of what this podcast is kind of about, the guys that need their opportunity. And I was watching it last night, and a good friend of mine and, and definitely someone who has put in his dues, Mike Gligick from uh, from Burlington, almost grabbed his first top 10, but then he had some, some, some pushes. So he finished tied 14th. That was his highest finish on the PGA Tour to date. Mike will definitely be a guest on this show. But, I mean, Gligg's turned pro in 2008, at 18 years old, spent a lot of time in the Canadian Tour, got to the Corn Ferry, and then finally got to the PGA Tour for the 1920 season. And obviously, it was a bit of a wash because of COVID. So he's getting to play this season. So I really hope to see Mike do really well. Um, just looking at the leaderboard here, Dave Hearn, another another Canadian, tied 14th. That's awesome. But then looking here, Akshay Batia, kind of uh, that's someone you definitely want to pay attention to. He uh, top 10 it. Really good. Um, James Hahn, that is definitely someone I think in today's interview we even mentioned him. Um, James Hahn played on the Canadian tour with me. You know, he he is someone that epitomizes this. <clears throat> on the, Living on the number, he had to stop playing golf, sell shoes at Nordstrom, get back into playing golf, and then he finally kind of broke through, got some solid play, won on the PGA Tour twice. Was really great seeing him up there. Unfortunately, didn't uh, didn't do too well yesterday. And then, yeah, Stuart Sink hasn't won in 11 years since the British Open, and he wins at 47 years old. I mean, it's not like he kind of went through any lows. He just kind of wasn't winning. You know, he's a good player, a handful of wins. So Stuart Sink closed it out. Um, pretty cool to watch. Harry Higgs, that's an entertaining guy to watch. So 
I mean, this this season, this time of the year, this it used to be what the fall finish. Now it's just the start of the year. A lot of good golfers in there that you've never heard of. So I would say give it a watch, and we'll definitely be talking about them on the show. And before we go into the interview, I want to bring attention to some of the people that watched um, or li- watched listened to episode one. Pretty cool. It's exclusive to the Short Par 4 app right now, so people have been downloading the app and they've been loving the app. But I'm going to give a little shout out to some of the comments from episode one. Jordan, nice podcast, Andrew. I usually watch on YouTube, but I'll follow you over here now as well. Thanks, Jordan. Jay Gravel, great podcast. Can't wait for more episodes. Thank you, Jay. Dennis Vasbender, well done, Andrew, and Short Par 4. So shout out. You can comment on the Short Par 4 app, which is pretty cool. Um, Rather than like in in podcasts on on iTunes, you're leaving a review with, um, you know, what you think. This is kind of cool. You have like a commenting feature on the Short Par 4 app. So um, you're listening to this. You obviously have the Short Par 4 app. So head over there, maybe favorite it, leave a comment on today's episode and let me know what you think. And I did mention it. Today's episode is a cool one. We have a very awesome interview that you're going to hear It's a long chat with a buddy of mine. We've known each other since roughly 2009, Matt Galloway. He played professional golf, excuse me, played professional golf, played the McKenzie Tour, uh, and then just kind of, you'll hear in an interview why he stopped and why he got into caddying, but he has now been a caddy on the LPGA Tour for five years, most notably caddying for Michelle Wee for two and a half years, basically until she, uh, she packed it in last year. He, he was with her through some of her injuries and um, was on her bag until she got her last injury. And she said, hey, you know, you can probably go find a new bag. I think he knew before a lot of other people knew that she was ready to, to take a break. And now she's a mother and um, we're so happy for her. But Matt's got some awesome stories he's going to tell in this interview about the Solheim Cup, about sponsorship, about <laughs> traveling on the McKenzie Tour when Tinder just came around. Um, flying, hungover, just a lot of great stories. Uh, Matt, as someone who is a caddy now, it's it's not the most glamorous life that you would think. It's very similar to what it is playing on the McKenzie Tour, playing on developmental tours. You're 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 trying to c- cover your costs. You're trying to not overspend. But Matt and I really get into it. Matt likes his beer. We're sharing a pint. We're we're chatting it up. So sit back, relax, enjoy this interview with the one and only Matthew Galloway. Matt, you are my first guest, yes. Cheers <laughs> to the first interview on... Man, you must have not been able to find anybody else. Yeah, pretty much. That was probably like ASMR, the, the beer right in it. What are you drinking right now? Um, Coastal Cove Hazy IPA from Wicked Weed. It's my go-to for the summer. That's Tampa, right? Wicked Weed? Mm-hmm. No, that's Asheville. North Carolina, yeah, but they distribute down here. Okay, I've got... Um, this is from masthead brewing company in cleveland ohio the one trick pony not an ad this is just from like a beer no free ads no free ads in the pot remember that that taver thing or Tabor thing that i did yeah yeah, yeah. this is one of the beers from that like a new england ipa so you can get matt here is man we've known each other since 2009 so 11 years oh yeah i didn't realize that yeah a long time yeah because then we are both beer aficionados i think our beer nerdum blossomed together Correct. I've already given a good introduction about kind of the arc of your career, but you turned pro in 2009, correct? Yeah. Graduated. Yeah. 2008, 2009. Same thing. Because you graduated e- college in 2008. Yeah, that's right. Because this is how we met. You emailed me like because I wrote a bl- I wrote a blog about turning pro for my golf spy. And then you emailed correct. me asking. Yeah, I was trying to tour. Yeah, I was trying to find out stuff for proposals, and I was yeah. trying to write a proposal for all my sponsors. Yeah. Nothing I was trying. Like, there's like, at the time, there's probably like five things or five people on the internet that had anything out there. You'd like, yeah. like, no one had a website. You had to dig through stuff. Yeah, because I remember, like, I was enough of like a kind of internet nerd where I had a website and I was blogging. And at, the, I mean, that's why it's kind of not surprising to see where I've transitioned now. But like, there was nothing for us that right. existed, and now it's almost like we've gone to the point where there's too much, but still nothing. Yeah, like, like it's a lot out there about I how to remember, turn pro and this and that, but none of it's very helpful. 
Yeah, like a co- another college teammate of mine, he had like an L- his like LLC proposal, and I had that in hand. So I basically just copied that verbatim. Yeah. And then made it my own spin, and then went from there. Because I I remember, because I think we had only like shot the shit like in Twitter messages or emails because I don't think we like physically met in person until no like, like some miniature event. Florida, Florida. Yeah, something in Florida. For I mean, you're a man of uh, West Florida fame. You were the the career money winner, leading money winner for how many years? Uh, I, I, w- I don't think I was leading. I don't know. I had, I like was all up there. Time. I think you yeah, were like, yeah. I think I'm still Joey, looking at top, top I think 10. Like, Joey Lemuel. Joey, Joey Lemuel, Lemuel like caught you. Cause I started, um, cause I was living in Sarasota and you were up in Tampa, but a lot of the events were down in the Sarasota yeah, area. It was clutch for me at the time. Cause I remember when I, I was living in Lakewood ranch and I like pulled up your website and you're like sponsorship pr- proposal. And like, it was good. Like it was super well designed and clean. And I was kind of like, Oh, who is this fucking asshole? Like he's so yeah. good at this. And mine is like, I'm struggling. And it, it's funny how it's like, we were good friends now, but like in the inherent competition in our sport, you kind of looked at everybody like, Ooh, right. maybe they're, you know, why is this guy getting money? And I'm not, or why is I think this guy I never got any money? So the best part about it. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. <laughs> Well, transitioning to another thing. Well, the best part of that, so so sidebar. So, like, I'm playing Canadian Tour in, like, 2014, 2015, and I asked an agent friend of mine for a, like, example of a money, like, a a letter they wrote their player for, like, a exemption letter or something. Yeah. And he sent it to me, and it was the same. He basically ripped off my style of, like, letter, like, formatting and everything. I was like, wait a second. I pulled up the website. His whole thing was just a ripoff of mine. That's amazing. Yeah, so I was just like, yeah, all right, that's cool. Because it's so fun because, yeah, we would have to pull these things and try to find, like, I remember the first letter I wrote for a sponsor's exemption because my first year on the Canadian Tour in 08, I was sponsored by a local Ford dealership in, in Ottawa. Yeah. They gave me a car. So there was a Ford-sponsored event, Gretzky's event on the Nationwide. So I wrote a letter because, oh, he's a high-up Ford dealer. He was thinking maybe he could get me. And I wrote a letter, and, like, it was fucking, like, three pages long, this sponsor's exemption letter. And it's like, yeah. no, that's not – they need to be write. short, sweet, like a cover yeah. letter to a resume. And it's still, like, a shot in the dark. It, it's who you know and who potentially can oh, pay 100%. for your spot. Oh, 100%. It's networking. Yeah. It's, it's still the same way. I mean, it's gotten – I'm not too involved in it now. I haven't stopped, stopped playing since, like, 2015. And yeah. I mean, get to that in the timeline, but it's like – yeah, yeah. It's all very consolidated now. Yeah, because we – so you were playing kind of West Florida for like four years basically, right? Yeah, I spun my wheels on West Florida and like anything else, Monday qualifiers. Yeah. Got on a couple of web events randomly. And then Canadian Tour like 13, 14, 15. But you, were you caddying for – you were caddying for Lee for a little bit, right? That was like a random 2012 like okay. thing. Like he fired his guy. He was like, "Hey, come do this." It was like his way of giving me money. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just did that and got a little experience, and I learned a lot. Cool. I mean, I did like six, seven events for him in like 2012, but it was like just more like I was friends with Lee. He was like, "I'm not. I, here's my way of helping you out." Because you guys went to the same school, didn't you? No, he went to Florida. It was a different school. It's just I met oh. through another avenues, and we became friends somehow and started playing a lot of golf together and Got i it. learned okay he's a good, he's a good friend yeah um because yeah you were, i was about to say we were going back to like couldn't get any money like i was lucky i got money for my first year and then fucking lost my card and never got excuse me money again yeah and then you just you know visa was my sponsor for the longest time but you had an opportunity to get some cash in 2013 did you not i, I there was an opportunity <laughs> This is, um, for some of the younger listeners, they may not remember this show, but the big break, Matt yep. was, you were, a, you were a big break, like star. You, you really, like you were a big deal. I remember I auditioned for that one. I didn't get it. Cause that was at yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the Ibero star resort where we played a Canadian tour event for a couple of years. Right. You got to the finals. What was on the line? It was cash, uh, right? Oh, sh- crap. Shit ton of cash. Can you cuss and, on like, this thing? Yeah. I've yeah, already yeah. Sorry. Um, no, I'm the Canadian. You don't have to say sorry. <laughs> no, it was a lot of cash. It was like, I think I'm thinking it was like 75 straight up cash, a spot in Mayakoba at the time. This is 2013. So a spot yeah. in like the 2014 or 2013 Mayakoba Classic. 
and like ten thousand dollars from Dix, whatever ten thousand. It was it was basically like a hundred thousand dollars worth of right. stuff. It was a big Adams deal. Yeah, it was like fifteen k from Adams. It was all ended up being like a hundred grand worth of cash. Yeah, because I remember, I think it was the the first big break that went to like cash was Derek Gillespie won that one in PEI. Yeah. That was like a hundred grand cash, and I think that was that was on nine. So yeah. big break just transitioned to cash. When did it end? A couple seasons after yours? Yeah, it was we were technically like season nineteen. I think they went like three or four more seasons. They would do like two or three a year. So that's why the number yeah. got so high. Yeah, because like one got, of the like, like one of the longest running reality TV shows, but next to like Survivor and like Big Brother. And now I was I just googled it. Like it's on Golf Pass. Like all the seasons are up. Yeah, there. they they re aired this summer during quarantine. They re aired a bunch of them on Monday, and yeah. they did our season eventually, which is funny because like there's a lot of people that didn't know I did it. And I didn't like yeah tell anybody. And I'm like I just saw you on Golf Channel. Like what in the heck was that? Cause did you, have you stayed in touch with anyone from the show? Um, like a couple of the guys here and there were like, we're all friends. There's like a state, there's actually a Facebook like group for like past big breakers. Past competitors, and then like, yeah. still, like you, see, you see stuff from like the people you were on the cast with and you stay in touch yeah. here and there, like the Brent Longs and Jay Woodson's, but. Cause Jay, yeah, that was a guy yeah. that like, he still might, maybe even still is playing. Yeah. He's around. got like, that's like eight kids now or something stupid. He's got a bunch of kids, but like, um, He's a great dude. I haven't really yeah. talked to him in a while. Brent, you message back and forth. It's just kind of like internet. State. Brent was the ball guy, right? Yeah. He was yeah, like, yeah. he was a really good player. At the time, Brent was like a mini tour legend. I was terrified when I saw Brent walking like, oh, great. Really? Yeah. Cause I think I saw him on some like Hooters tour events. But yeah, in, the time, in he just like, he'd run it in like six events in one year. It was silly. Wow. And then, yeah, I think I remember from your season because my parents love the show. And then it's kind of, it's funny. Right. It was like full circle when you stayed at my parents' house yeah, for yeah. that Canadian Women's Open. My mom was like, oh, yeah, I remember. Like, yeah, because but uh, there was also famous some, Andrew Jensen basement. That's it. A lot of. Uh, that hey, the opens the going, opens that going back to Hunt Club. Basement. What's that? Opens going back to Hunt Club. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it next year? Something like next year or, or two years ago, I think. Yeah, that was that's a fun story we can get into as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that was a good that was a good weekend because um, there was a couple characters in that show that were like characters right like yeah, that's what the reality sure. show was like that so that was like 2013 and then you got your first year on the Kings was 14 wasn't it yeah, like i got in some events through that in 13 and 14 okay. i qualified had full status NBC, right you went yeah. to crown isle yeah and then it's 15, funny i had some like, status to play a lot we were like sorry to interrupt like I, I do that for a living but we were like buddies but you were like i don't know if you ever did this too like when you were playing you have guys that you like kind of flag on leaderboards like on the app or whatever, like you were someone that like, I'd always like was always like a favorite. Yeah, yeah. So I remember, cause I didn't do Canadian tour school for a few years. And I remember when you qualified at crown Isle and then kind of given a little timeline, 2013 is when Tinder existed, started. Cause I remember my first year on the Canadian, <laughs> Canadian tour, my yeah. Mackenzie yeah. tour year, 2013 yeah. being in Calgary, Alberta for that event and like downloading Tinder for the first time and being like, everyone was embarrassed to be on Tinder and then 2014, <laughs> your uh, Mackenzie oh, tool yeah. season <laughs> was, uh, I okay. think I remember the Ottawa event. I got in on a sponsor's exemption in the Ottawa event. So you stayed, no, you stayed in the hotel. You didn't stay with us. Um, yeah, I stayed downtown. I went out with you one night because you were meeting a girl from Tinder. We went to some restaurant and like I met up like to kind of like right. be with you when you were meeting a girl from Tinder in downtown Ottawa. I don't remember. I don't remember this. I, 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 I don't know. It's. I mean, it's six years ago. Yeah. Like it, it is a while. Yeah. It feels like some of yesterday, but like kind of that is one of the experience that is, I'm sure not un- unique to just developmental tour golf, but probably more prevalent in developmental tour golf now that like dating apps exist. And... Yeah. Even like caddying, it still exists or exists. Oh, yeah. It's like. Yeah, it's still a thing. I mean, not anymore. I'm married, so yeah, my wife's in another room. Hey, so I, like, I met my wife on Bumble, so it's like yeah. those uh, the apps are fun and they were they they serve a purpose, and I guess it's like what you you want out of it. And for some guys on tour that don't care about making cuts and just want to get laid, well, they have apps for that. And try explaining that to your sponsors, though, why you're <laughs> yeah. It's actually it was a it's a bad thing because you get on there on Monday. And it's like you're kind of trying to find a match to potentially see in a couple of days. But now I like, think your brain's already like, 
n- not thinking about the weekend. It's like, well, yeah, I yeah, yeah. The weekend off. And it's, I can't, again, my first few years on tour, like I didn't have that. I can't imagine that difficulty for players now that like single guys out there, like it, it's an absolute distraction it, because well, you're, I, you're focused on potentially that rather than like, oh, you know, you got to birdie the last three to make the cup, but you know, you've got this like smoke show waiting for you to hang out. Uh. <laughs> it was funny, like maybe the second or third week out there, like I had a, a an adventurous week and weekend meeting yeah. a local, which it wasn't even through that. It was like, I just, it was just some waitress I met at a restaurant. That had been in like, and, uh, like BC, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and had a, yeah. a good week and finished like whatever, finished 15th or 12th or something. I was like, you know what? I could do this every week. This is great. <laughs> Loosens me up. Wasn't very effective. I had no, a lot of weekends off. Yeah, it's tough. Um, my Joel I, Damon I took a lot of my money. Yeah, that 14, that was his year, right? No, that was Mackenzie Hughes's year. No, it was Jamin's year. He won everything. He won like two or three events. Yeah, and he won the money yeah. list. Yeah, and, and that's when he was unstoppable. And he didn't like, he didn't give a shit either. He just like, yeah. he would party Monday, Tuesday and still win the event. And you're like, how the hell is this guy doing yeah. this? He's like that guy that like doesn't study for exams and gets yeah. a, and you hate him. Like, you hate him. Grinding, you're you're like, Ugh. Cause that's like, that's, what's really cool to see Joel do so well now. And, and yeah, so many sure. people come to see like what his personality is like. Cause a lot of McKenzie tour guys saw that firsthand and even oh. uh, it was 13. Cause Tony Finau played in 2013 Right. Kind of same thing. Like you see these McKenzie tour guys that are doing well now and you, you get to know them in such a difference. It's kind of like maybe people say like the European tour has that camaraderie and, and the PJ tour doesn't. And I think McKenzie tour, certainly there is a camaraderie up there, especially for a yeah. lot of the Americans, I would imagine. Cause you're traveling to a new country together. Yeah, for sure. And like I even, still have a pretty good like lifetime relationship with like three or four guys that I played with that those two seasons like i just stayed i was in arkansas last week with lpj event yeah i stayed with one of the guys i played with in 14's parents place i stayed there every single year for the last six years that's so awesome that's kind of like, you, you know how that is with the golf yeah. you just build these relationships and you meet people and it's like very surprising well because that's kind of that's something that's super i definitely i would say unique to something like the mckenzie tour where you know private housing billeting is such a norm i I don't think from my experience playing like hooters tour and and those type of tours like they offer it but it's not good back in the when hooters tours was like on its prime there was like always host families some of those bigger neighborhoods you'd have host housing yeah but i was not scared to stay at someone's house i guess to me i i didn't uh maybe because i was like oh i've never been around north carolina or whatever like i'd rather stay in a hotel but i didn't play a lot of hooters tour events because my first my first few years were all Canadian tour. And then I got, I really lost my status when I think Hooters got out. So, yeah. but that's something that a lot of people don't see. Like that's one of the, the upsides of this kind of like lower tiered, if you will, mm-hmm. meeting people and, and, and staying like, like staying in, in touch with these people that host you. And then you have stories like that, or like, I mean, you've stayed with my parents. Like it's yeah, cool. Exactly. Like, I'm not scared to stay in someone's house. I mean, like, as I get older, I'm like, maybe I'll just get a hotel this week. But, like, some weeks I'm, like, super expensive. Like, but you know what? The housing helps, man. Even when yeah. you're caddying, it's like saving a couple bucks here and there is fantastic. Because I've gotten to the point, I think it's because those couple years when I was, like, really heavily speaking and I'm being put up in hotels yeah. and all that kind of stuff, I think I got super spoiled. So then I got super comfortable. Like, no, I'm staying in a hotel every time. I so my wife, like, my wife has her corporate job and, like, yeah she gets her free like her hotels paid for on the road and like it's very funny when or you have free have totally different standards of hotels oh, i got yeah. my caddy hotel and i got like when we go on the road with her it's like oh let's forget that we get the hampton Inn. it's like the damn ritz carlton this week i know yeah even kelly and i are going um down to short part four this weekend for the app launch and like trying to find a hotel kind of got that middle ground because obviously you want to stay like maybe right downtown sarasota we don't want to spend too much money, but I'd be content staying in a $60 hotel room. And it's like, yeah. eh, not so much anymore. Cause there's a I'm couple, sure we, is it Sarah, is there in Sarasota? Yeah. They're in Lakewood ranch. So we're staying at this place called the even, which look, it's got like a little gym. There's this room. new, like, yeah, there's this new place that opened downtown. I don't know if it's any good or not. It was like a kind of a funky, I'll, I'll text it to you later. Okay. But like, I was trying to think of what it is. Cause, but like, oh my gosh, some of the hotels I've stayed in, but it's, it's funny. Like you, you, choose that over private housing and you're like oh fuck that was a bad choice well it was funny like flash forward a couple weeks ago in toledo 
Um, what? Yeah, and our flashback. So there was this. I hadn't been back to Toledo like since 2016, since okay. since I hadn't been there in a while. And then there's this Red Roof Inn we stayed at. I was like, oh, it was pretty decent. They fixed up the rooms, and I was like, all right. My buddy had booked a room for this year, thinking it was the same place, and I pulled up there, and it was like a crack den. And I was like, <laughs> I just looked at it, and I'm like, no, this isn't yeah. happening. Like this, I just scrambled on the app. I had to find some other place. I'm like, I'm not staying here. Reviews. Yeah, I don't. I I think that's only happened to me once, but I didn't have a choice. Like I still had to stay in it because yeah. it was. It was, I, I, Sault, I was. It was like the Sault Ste. Marie Invitational, but it was during, like this. It was like August. It was I think no, it was August long weekend. But like and, Sault Ste. Marie is out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and there's two Sault Ste. Marie's right. There's Michigan right. and Ontario, and Michigan's a small town, cute town. Ontario, eh, not so much. Dodge. But there was like a bunch of weddings happening, and the, the event was in Michigan. Oh, but I got a hotel. What's that? Everything yeah, everything. And, yeah. and like and the only hotels were like casinos and that. And then I had to stay on the Canadian side, and it was like this hotel was also the Greyhound station, and like Sick. legitimately, legitimately this this hotel was a bed, a light on like a box, and a TV on like nice. some makeshift desk. And like my room key changed every night, like didn't work. And I'm like, fuck, someone's been in there. Like, I didn't leave anything in there. It was, I mean, I played well that week, but it was bad. Yeah. I've got some, yeah, there's a ton of bad hotels yeah. I've stayed in. But. Well, because that's kind of like, I mean, you've transitioned into caddying full time and right. it's not too dissimilar to the experience of being not on the PGA tour, I guess. Well, yeah, I, I mean, like, lower level not even too. that. It's like your bottom line is still based on what you spend for the week. So it's kind of yeah. like you, like any like professional golf caddying, even the PGA tour guys, you're still taking care of your own expenses yeah. outside of your weekly salary. So you're like, you got to yeah. like, what's my fine line of trying to make money this week? Cause at least caddying, you know, you have a weekly salary that you kind of, you're working with. Whereas when we were playing, fuck, we didn't have yeah. a weekly salary. Yeah. We had a hope I uh, don't yeah. lose my shirt this week. Like if I can keep maybe what I lost under a thousand dollars, it's not a terrible week. But basically. I mean, that's that's the toughest thing about Canadian Tour, and it's still the same thing now. It's like you gotta finish like top twenty in the money list, even like cover your cover your shit. Like even, oh yeah, no, yeah. even the break even, yeah. not let's make money. I mean, luckily when I played in fourteen, like I, you know I did big break, and obviously the, the reason I did it was like all right, maybe I get my name out there and I'll get some attention and play yeah. well. Either I'll win and make some money, or I'll act like a normal human being on the show. And some people are like, hey, and this kid needs some help. Yeah, yeah. I'll give him some money. And it achieved all those goals. I made a little money in the show, and then I got a sponsor out of it. This guy gave me 150 grand to play for two years. Yeah. Which at the time I was like, I'm the richest motherfucker alive. Yeah. Like, I thought I had all the money in the world. I'm like, I'm gonna get my own apartment. I got my own. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Fantastic. And then. You know, 14 season rolls are on. I'm like, I'm not like staying under the Carlton by any means, yeah. but like, still paying your bills. Everything's covered. Like, I wasn't worried about missing cuts. And it, and just to you know, cut the story short, he basically pulls the plug a year, a half of the year, or basically half the way through the two years of yeah. 50 grand. And I basically just missed skin through second stage by a shot, which would have given yeah. me a web card Remember and that. totally probably changed yeah. everything. I'm well, because that was also down. when a web card. Meant oh something. no, that. It meant something, yeah. It wasn't yeah, yeah. like, there oh, was yeah. Final, final stage of Q school and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. So I would have had a web card, and then that would have changed a lot of things. But, like, based on my drive back home from Florida after missing Q school by shot, he's like, yeah, and it's like something changed financially for me. I don't have the funds to put this I anymore. So I'm yeah. like, all right. So I had stockpiled some money. I had some money saved away. But I was basically down to my last, like, 20 grand. And I was, like, I played all through the winter. I started caddying the stream song again. And then I got a call, like, from a buddy there, it's like, hey, this LPG girl needs some help. And then, shit, I've been doing it for six years. Like, I but just got stuck. Was Not Ryan stuck or... it, No, Ryan was my first. I worked, Ryan was Chinese, first. I worked for this Chinese girl, Cindy Fang, for three weeks. Yeah. And it was awesome being out there. Because my first three weeks were Hawaii, San Francisco, and, like, I mean, Dallas. But Dallas was cool because I stayed downtown and it was fun. But, yeah. like, those are fun weeks. Like, Hawaii is mm-hmm. awesome. I've never been to Hawaii. This is my first time going. And then San Francisco is awesome. It's a cool town. And then Dallas is whatever. I had a great time being out on the road, but like working for this girl sucked. Like yeah. talking to this girl practice, sun up the sundown, like you literally 12 hour days. It was abysmal. And then yeah. it just didn't work. I, me and her yeah. dad didn't get along and it's fine. I'm not that there's one of those agree to like, Hey, I'm going to go part my ways. 
And then I guess Ryan's guy left and Ryan calls me and I met some people out there in three weeks and it turned into like, I'm out here for six years now. Yeah. Cause I remember where was I? I was playing an event in like the Toronto area. It's when you, your first year with Ryan, the, the tournament yeah. at uh, Whistlebear. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 I yeah, with yeah. Your you stay with my buddies. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine, like I got you a place to stay there. Yeah. But and then, I'm still friends with them. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah. It's well, Canadians, man. We're 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 good. We're good shit. We're yeah. good people. But that was because uh, Matt, like for like context, obviously I'm a big hockey fan. Matt is a for a, an American, a Floridian, huge hockey fan, huge Tampa fan. Like we've been to games together. Um, when Chicago the Canucks finals, were in town. Yeah, they just got through. That was huge. Canucks gotta gotta put, dig deep tonight to get through. God, I hate Boston, so I was so happy that series. Yeah, over. Too. anyway, continue your story. But that event, you guys in your in your pro am, right? Like you played with three hockey players, didn't you? Oh, that's right. It was like it was Matt Hoff, it was Matt uh, Hoffman, Stoner, uh, wasn't it? Mark Stone. Yeah, I think it was. He's playing it for Vegas of, now. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it was him and another guy. I couldn't remember. It was, just, it, it was a fun week. It was a fun pro am. Because I remember you texting me. You're like, these guys can hit it, and like, cause yeah, a lot of. A lot of Canadian guys in the NHL are just golf all, all summer. Sends it. Like, it's funny because, yeah. like, the pro ams and the LPGA are pure scramble, right? So it's like, yeah. you play the best tee ball and we're having 50 yard pitch shots in every single hole. I'm like, Ryan, we got to drop back and actually hit it where we're supposed to hit it yeah, from. Yeah. Because we haven't seen this nine holes. Like, you need to actually hit your second shot to actually get a feel for it. Yeah. Like, having 40 yards in every hole is actually useless because that golf course is. At Whistleberry, yeah. I don't, don't want to talk about Whistleberry. Yeah, yeah. So then after Ryan. I mean, to like the outside eye, even to me, I was like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. Like after Ryan, if you want, like to use a term like big break, like you moved on to arguably the one of the like the most one of the most influential golf bags in women's golf. Right. Because I remember it was Malaysia seeing you guys and you'd only been with her for a few weeks. Then I remember saying I was like, what the fuck? Like. It was Singapore. It was Singapore. At, yeah, was, yeah. Singapore was our actual first week. You're gonna say she an won Malaysia, say right? No, no, she did win Malaysia. Okay, I, I get right. confused. C- carry on. I don't want to interrupt your story. No, no, no. Ahead. I just remember seeing you on TV and your and your beard and being like, because for, again, for context, Matt's not someone that like we talk a lot, but it's not like, oh my gosh, look what's happening to me, or this is what's next, this is what's next. It's like. You just kind of, and it, it's ironic because when you got off the big break, like you were active on social media, you did it like you were like in this influencer space before it was called an influencer space. Like you right. were really, you were doing stuff for the, the, the bolts on, on, so on Twitter and like, you've yeah, always yeah, been yeah. a big Twitter user and you take great photos on Instagram. And then like when opportunities presented themselves to really kind of go down that path, like you never did. You're not like a big kind of like, Ooh, look at me person from from yeah i mean i that was an internal just struggle and we can talk yeah. about that later but it's more or less like so yeah i did we just didn't stay in touch it was and actually it was quite a whirlwind so like 2016 ends and me and ryan have this whatever we don't we're not gonna continue to work together yeah. going into well i remember that we, i remember talking about that with you but then basically the, the team and then piecing together my schedule i'm in the bahamas i worked for this girl taiwanese girl wailing sue who's a great player and it was just kind of like piecing that together a schedule and um, I'm in the bar on Friday night. I'm sitting there drinking with the guy who was working for Michelle. And he's like, yeah, I think I just got fired. And I literally just get my phone out. And like, I don't know Michelle very well. At the time, yeah. like, just Michelle Lee's a figure for me. She plays on the tour. I've maybe spoken five words to Michelle Lee at the time. That max five. Yeah. And then I just get my phone out. And I text one of her good friends that I'm good friends with. I'm like, hey, I heard her blah, 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 got fired. What is she going to do? And that was all I needed to do. And you know, before the end of the week, I get back home. I'm on the phone having a phone call with her. And it was just having an interview. Because to and me, we're like, supposed to, and, then, and then we're meant to go to Australia, and yeah. which is like we have a, we go to Bahamas, we go off, we go to Australia. I go to Australia, work for another girl, just piece of the other schedule because I love going to Australia. And then like Singapore's two weeks later, and then we talking. You know, she'll finally text me. I haven't really talked to them. She texts me on like a Friday or Saturday. It's like, hey, can you, are you still in town? Can you meet? We go grab acai somewhere at this place in Adelaide, Australia. And she's like, hey, I'm probably going to get a sponsor invite in Singapore. You want to go, can you caddy? I'm like, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. I can. And so it was kind of like at the time, I didn't really have a solid job. This is a big win win for me either way. Yeah. Like I could go. And then all the ca- oh, way caddying kind of works is it always kind of starts as like, hey, you come start at a three week trial. Yeah. Because that, that's all it is. Two or three week trial. You do three weeks. 
you see how it goes and you go from there. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, you move on to the next thing. I was like, what's the worst I can lose? Like I can go work for Michelle for three weeks. It's not going to work out and I'll find another job. So it's like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Which admittedly means I got to go, I'm flying back home to Florida from Australia, <laughs> turn around and like fly back to Singapore. Like I was home for three days, jet lag. It's just like, yeah, it was a lot of flying, but it was worth it. Cause we go to Singapore and have a fantastic week leading going in the last rounds. I mean, she didn't get it done, but I mean, yeah. it was, I mean, for her, she hadn't done much in a while. So that was fun for her. It's fun for me. And then, you know, Sunday night, I'm in Singapore walking home after having a nice dinner. And she's like, Hey, do you want to do the rest of the year? I'm like, absolutely. I want to do the rest of the year. And I worked for her for two and a half years. Yeah. Cause that was also a Solheim cup year, right? Yeah. 17. Yeah. 17. Cause that was the women's open was in Ottawa that year. You saved my parents. And I had an event in Quebec. I missed the cut, so I came home. Was it 17? Yeah, because you came. It was it was the week after the yeah. Solheim Cup. Yeah, that's right. And you're yeah. like, I'm going to be a little... Because uh, y'all partied hard, like winning. Oh God, that's a funny story. Yeah, we, yeah. So we were in like Des Moines, Iowa. And like yeah. getting from Des Moines, Iowa to like Ottawa on it's any not, airline yeah. is like a nightmare. Yeah. There's no direct flights. There's no nothing. So like I'm on this 5.30 of the morning flight from like Des Moines through Chicago, through God knows where to get to Ottawa. And um, we win the cup. It was a fun, fun week. Solheim Cups are the funnest weeks ever. Yeah, like, yeah. Was a, like, Solheim Cups are the best for caddies because you get, like, you get paid. You're staying in some swanky hotel for free. You get all this free shit, like rain gear and shirts and stuff. And so it's a fun week. It's a day treat. Yeah, and I would imagine for you, too. Like, it's, it's you're representing your country. Like, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, and so, like it's, it's a really cool experience. Yeah. And, like, there's a crap ton of fans and a lot of, yeah. Patriotism. So to have done a Solheim Cup in America as an American, like that's kind of added yeah, and to win. Sick. It's like this added kind of wow. Yeah, it was sick. And we were we were playing like a Saturday morning four ball match with Danielle Kang and my buddy Caddy, one of my good good caddy friends, Caddy for Caddy's for Danielle. And we're going down like the 15th hole and it's like seven, eight deep at the 15th hole. I'm like looking, I'm like, that's so cool. This is the coolest shit ever. Um, but anyway, so me and we had a great night Sunday. I had this 5:30 flight. It gets to the point where, like, I can't go to sleep. I just got to stay. Yeah, I remember you texting me Sunday night, and you're like, I hope your parents don't mind. Like, I'm going to be going on no sleep. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to be a zombie. Yeah, yeah, Like, And so I stay awake all night. And I and anyone knows me well, like, I can fall asleep anywhere. So, like, I'm liable to just, like, sit down and fall asleep. (laughs) because I've slept. Literally, we've shared a bed. (laughs) In yeah, your freaking old, in your old, uh, like, girl over garage apartment. Oh, I forgot you stayed there. Anyways, um, I'll sleep anywhere and you're the loudest yeah. snorer on the planet. <laughs> well, we don't need to tell anybody about that. Um, and so I decided to stay up. Like, it was the funniest thing is, like, I didn't remember what I packed. I don't know what I did. But, anyways, yeah. I get to the airport. We get to the airport fine. My buddy, my buddy Cole, who works for Danielle, he's flying with me to Canada together and we're boarding this plane. Like I'm, I sit down at the, the gate and I pass out at the gate maybe before the flame, before yeah. the plane boards. And he wakes up. He's like, Hey man, Hey man, we're boarding, we're boarding. I'm like, all right, all right. Okay, yeah. And so like, I, I, I got pass out again. And so he's like getting in line, the plane, like he's about the board. He looks over, sees me pass out the gate. And like, there's no chance I wake up. So he runs over and just straight up like bitch slaps me as hard yeah. as he can. And, like, people in the gate area were just like, what in the hell is happening? And so I just woke up, like, oh, 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 and I just grabbed my stuff and get on the plane. And, like, I, oh, flying hungover sucks. And that it's was the worst. Like, it's the absolute worst. I have, like, I'm fortunate I haven't, like, I don't think I've, I honestly maybe done it once or twice, but not very often. Like, I'm not a huge drinker, but, like, that's a situation where I'd probably be in the same boat. Because, yeah, I remember you saying, because I was, this event was in, like, for me, it was in Victoriaville, Quebec. So I think I left. Like, I, I was there when you got there, and then I left. Yeah. I missed the cut, so I came back. Hey, we hung out that week a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I remember. Spent, I spent some time with you all that weekend, like, taking you around Ottawa. You had already been around Ottawa, but some of the other caddies. Things had changed, and that, yeah. And that was, um, that was the, the, the McGregor-Mayweather fight that weekend. Right. Because we watched uh-huh. it. I remember, like, I remember well, we the girl. We went up to that bar. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, this yeah, British yeah, yeah, pub yeah. when I remember, like, hanging out with Mel Reed, Bronte, Right. And uh, yeah. Jay Marie, like it was kind of cool, like, and but then at the same token, that was like Michelle. So it was cool to like get to hear about your experience working for Michelle and like 
obviously everyone has an opinion about her dad and this and that. And like for me to hear that, it's like, it's, that's obviously super overblown and not the reality. But, um, but I remember like kind of getting into it and like checky bouncy. That's when I learned about that. And then everybody. Uh, but yeah. Anyway. But I, like, if I know what that means, but no, like that's just a term, like a caddy term that I learned. But then that was when she fucking got appendicitis and like yeah. had to go to a hospital in Ottawa. And you guys were like, top 10 going into Sunday right? it was like, like top 12. 20 going into Sunday we were like 18th or 20th or whatever and like Michelle's been hurt a lot and she goes to the yeah. hospital a lot and like at this point I'm working for her for a full year I've gotten a text message like hey don't be alarmed I'm going to the hospital for xyz yeah. and it got to the point where I'm just like okay yeah I'll see you yeah. whatever time and then she's pretty like they're pretty much like they run on the clock like if yeah. they say they're going to be there at 10 20 they're there at 10 20 and then when she said, she's like, oh, I'll be there. And like, she doesn't show up at that time. She's supposed to show up. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. And so she's texting me like, hey, like, I think, I think I'm going to be able to make it. I think I'll be able to make it. They're just counting my white blood cells. I think I'm going to be able to make it. And I'm like, when, once I heard white blood cells were involved, I'm like, this isn't good. Uh, it's good Canadian healthcare, but that's the, I remember. But to me. Well, the, the, the funniest thing is like, so it came to the point where like, hey, so uh, she calls me. She's like, I, they're taking my appendix out. And we're supposed to be in a tea like in an hour. And so I go in the rules trailer and be like, hey, uh, hey guys, um, Michelle's not making it today. And they're like, okay. And they have obviously a procedure about withdrawals and like yeah. usually you have to do it in person. And they're like, well, was Michelle able to come and tell us she's withdrawing? I'm like, guys, I don't think you get it. Like she's going into like surgery. Surgery, like, yeah. You know, I, I can call you, I can call her from here and you can talk to her while she's on the hospital bed about to go under the table. But yeah, like she's got to pull her appendix out. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but to me, like, you know, that week, because obviously we'd hung out at times when you're a caddy, but that week I got like, I got a, a better understanding of like how it works as a caddy and like the financial side of it. And fuck, man, like I was like, obviously my, my, my family's big Michelle Wee fan. So the fact that you were looping for her was like super, super cool. Yeah. But like, we want to see her do well. But then to me, I'm like, fuck, you're like, your paycheck just went from pretty good to like, but to me, and I'm like, that's like business wise. I'm like, that fucking sucks. But like obviously someone's health is, is someone's health. Like that's not what I'm. Well, I'm I mean, at the like, end of the day, to like me, I, look at, from... I look to you and I'm like, shit, that sucks for your bottom line that week, as opposed to. I mean, at the end of the day, like we just had a good Solheim Cup and we got paid pretty well there, so it's yeah, kind of yeah. like, and I had a great year, so it wasn't like I was that pissed about it. No, like no, if no. it was like this year or last year, I'd have been like, oh, here we go again. I lost a ton of money. But even it, it goes back to like one of the things we were talking about earlier this year with like the restart because of COVID, right. and the like the the all the procedures like if your player tested positive on friday and they find out saturday and your players in the top 10 or leading oh they they don't get they can't they get they have to withdraw they're out and it's like okay well their status and all that isn't affected pj tour corn fairy lbj and all that yeah but their caddy just lost the well lot. yeah they did lose a lot of money but still like the lpj tour has been great there's a stipend in place for those weeks. Like the caddy and player both get paid. Like, it's, Oh, serious? okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So they're like, they've had a stipend in place. Like the players maybe aren't, ha it's not as good as say what the PGA tour was, but like sure. there's a stipend in place to take care of the caddies and players. And, you know, Mike Wan's done a great job to set it all up and make sure everything was covered. And so everything's fine in that regard, but it's just yeah. like, yeah, that, that would suck. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's comp I feel like it'd be comparable to, you know, playing the McKenzie tour, making a cut, and then having to withdraw, you're getting last place money. Yeah. yeah. You, no matter where I mean, you are. I mean, the, the stipend is better than last place money. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, there were some jokes like, this would be- Last place money on the McKenzie tour was like $400. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even- McKenzie tour, man. I mean, no, it, it is what it is. It's just that's the nature of the beast at the, at the lower level. Right. But like, I remember what we were talking about, but this whole restart, for me, I, I've played a few tournaments. Cool but I'm by myself, but you guys have like rules. Like you can't room with other caddies you were saying, right? Yeah. So uh, it was very convalescent in the beginning of the year. it was kind of like, you got to stay around rooms. Like, and so we all save money by like sharing a rental car, sharing a room with your buddies. Like, so it's kind of like you like get like together. Tour, like just yeah, like yeah, yeah. Tour. yeah. And so they were kind of saying like, Oh, you can't do that. But now they kind of, they, they've not saying loosen the rules, but it's like, you can stay with someone else, but just know if that one person tests positive, like you're going to have to withdraw from the event as well. You're still eligible for the stipend, but you're going to pull out of the event, yeah. which is at the beginning was like very risky. You're like, I can't do that. But now like 
you kind of know who's taking it seriously and who's not. So it's kind of like you pick and choose your battles of what you're doing. And so it's a matter of like, I'm not going to put my, my job in jeopardy or testing positive, but we've done it. The tour's done a great job. Our testing's great and everything's fine. So like we haven't had the last four or five weeks, no one's really tested positive. So it's not a major concern of mine. So everyone's kind of figuring out their own individual protocols within the LPGA protocols. And so, I mean, Luckily, the LPGA Tour was able to fall, kind of see what the PGA Tour did and see how they kind of might have had some errors here and there and then like make those protocols from yeah. there. Like the PGA Tour walked, you know, gave a little forefront for what they're supposed to do. And I think like to me as like a, I'm a casual golf fan. Uh, as I've gotten older, I pay less and less attention to it, but I'm invested in my friends, like players, caddies. And I mean, the LPGA Tour, like, Juan's doing it like it's cool to watch what he's doing like he's doing a really cool job and like the tour is I, I think I'm, I'm it's awesome like what's been happening and like how he handles things especially given kind of where it was maybe seven years ago like when it was like looking like oh my gosh there might not be an LPGA tour like it's pretty dope to see how it's like re-cemented itself in the space of golf but not in the way that like people thought it had to by being more American, basically. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, listen, so there's like, there's blessings and curses to way that LPGA tour set up. So being a yeah. global tour, there's a lot of events that are based in global out, like in global outies yeah. and like Asia and other countries. Yeah. And so having those events elsewhere, now you're not being able to travel that really puts that into jeopardy, but there's also TV rights in those countries that are put in jeopardy. There's a lot of different yeah. multi-channel streams. I mean, listen, Mike's done a great job. I mean, there's some gripes about things that have gone on this year, but maybe the caddy thing, but like the caddy's optional deal, but that's just a small thing. And I mean, I remember when I started to like, you would think like, oh, the commissioner of the tour, you never get to see him. And like, once you get out there, you realize like, Mike will be out there. Mike will play in pro-ams. You know, Mike, Mike will code the tour. If he plays on a pro-am and he'll tip the, the tour caddy a hundred dollars every single time. That's I mean, I cool. probably shouldn't say that, but like, he'll like, he'll like, yeah. he's a good dude. Like, uh, yeah. And he, it's funny, he comes to stream song every winter, and I caddy for him for two or three days at stream song, and I've gotten to know him quite well. And it's kind of like he's a guy that will say hi to you just by your first name and ask you how your family's doing. He's That's fantastic. Awesome. And he's the nicest guy in the world. And like, he makes you like want to run through wall for the LPGA Tour because he he tell, he sells it, and he does well, and he's great at his job. And I can't – I mean, he's a great commissioner to have. I mean, as us as hockey fans, he's, we're thinking Gary Bettman. So it's, it's pretty mean, good to – yeah. <laughs> And even having when LPGA does go and there's an issue somewhere, Mike will step out and just say, hey, like, here's what we're dealing with. And like, here's the explanation to it. And like, here it is. And he'll step in front of a camera and just well, like say. All his, all his stuff he did with uh, Sophia. That was awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's it's that it's a tough, tough position to be in yeah. for that situation. Because he basically just has a Twitter, golf Twitter mob, like running after yeah. him with a pitch. And like. Well, and we are our world right now for these last seven months. Everybody is wanting to find a reason to to be heard and complain about something and it's listen, listen like everyone and even i get wrapped up in this like i get wrapped up in the way the pj, PJ tour works the web, web.com tour worked playing golf for five six years and all of a sudden like the rules and regulation are really different than lpga and there's like weird rules here and there and like why don't they do that the way the men do it and you're like you kind of start figuring out the reasons you're like oh that makes sense why that policy is that way and then michael mike just came out and said like here's why we're doing this we're not going to change the rules in the middle of the year and we'll revisit at the end of the year but like he explained yeah. it the way he needed to. Perfect. Everyone's kind of like, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Funny what just a good explanation it does for people. But that would yeah. mean kind of that that fits into just to see someone that, again, I'm not I'm a huge golf fan. I don't pay attention to a whole lot. But like to see a Symmetra Tour girl win a major, that's fucking awesome. I mean, I wouldn't call Sophia a Symmetra Tour girl. Like okay, she, so she has, she's like, had on and off. She like as long okay. as I've been on tour, she's had on or off status on LPGA tour. She just had a to me as like I mean, she casual. basically was conditional status, misses a putt, like a four foot putt in the last hole at Q series that would have gave her a conditional card again. And she just happened to be not have any status at all, being conditional, not making a card. She was like loses all that. So she just goes in the symmetric category. So it's kind of like Dude, she was. She's been an LPGA member on and off as long as I've been on the yeah, tour. So it's, it's, it's like a guy who plays back and forth between the AHL and the NHL, and then does a whole year Same. in the AHL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but exactly. again, He's as just, like kind of like a peripheral fan, it's funny what Twitter does to like. Well, I mean, it's the, the same narrative. notion. I mean, the same notion. The fields have been a little weaker this year. Like Sophia wouldn't have gotten in marathon 
if it hadn't been because of COVID, because the strip field would have been a little stronger. Yeah. But like yeah. once again, there's a, a it's like a ten spot qualifier based on the best ten scores at marathon, and she finished like whatever ninth to her and her spot at the British Open, which is I think they do every single year. Mm-hmm. And so she earned her spot there, which is fantastic. But I mean, and she took advantage of it. So hats oh, off to her. She's a great, yeah. it's, it's, it's super, it's super awesome. Like she's a great kid. And I, I know her a little bit and I was happy to see her win. Kid, how old is she? She's like 27, 28. Okay. She's a, little, I, I, she's a little older. I mean, we're, we're older though. From old LPGA standards, every girl is an LPGA is like 20 years old. Yeah, no kidding. But we are, we are up there and that's why. Yeah. I'm in media now and you're in caddying. How's your game? How's your game? I I just actually, I just came from the golf course. I hit balls this afternoon for the first time in a bit. Yeah. Cause, um, we have a couple weeks. We're going to Palm Springs next week and then Portland the week after. And then I'm going to go to Bandon Dunes for a week by myself. Kind of on the solo. I've never been. It's kind of solo pilgrimage. I've always wanted to go. My wife's finally like, you know what? Just go and get it over with. I'm like, go get out of your system. Take your photos. Yeah, that, that's kind of a fun thing too. Your, you got a good camera now. You've, I mean, you've always had a good. I've never had a good eye for photo as like a f- video and like media nerd. You've always had a good eye for photo. You've always have taken good photos, and it's been it's unique to see a a golfer with an Instagram that's not about like my golf Instagram is all my. It's all me. It's all golf. Like yeah, it's yeah, brand. Yeah. Whereas yours is just good photos, and then you got into cameras and lenses and. Well, I, I still have a zero shit clue. Like I, I basically have done shot everything on an iPhone until Michelle as an end of the year gift in 2018 gave me a camera. And it was very yeah, basic like a Sony alpha something, right? Just like a Sony a 6,000, like yeah. by no means a special camera, but it has a little more capability and I have one lens and actually I have two lenses. I have a vintage. And you have the nifty 50, right? Yeah. I have a, I have a vintage Canon FD 50, which equivalents to the crop factor, like to 85. Yeah. Yeah. Like ish. Um, <laughs> no one's listening anymore. <laughs> rah, rah, turn out. But anyways, it's like I, I've like it's it's a new thing for me, and it's fun. It's a creative outlet. I'm kind of now going through this weird like creative block thing where I'm just like terrified to post anything. Like I've taken a shit ton of photos in the last year and a half. I just haven't like shown anybody any of them. Really? So it's more or less just like I'm sitting on this, time like, with like. I mean, it's Christian Hafer, right? Yeah. Hafer? yeah. Yeah, you spent some time friend. with him. You spent some time with Eric and all of his. Like you've, yeah, you've you've been around some of the more influential kind of golf photographers, and you've you've breathed sure. that rarefied air, brushed shoulders with them, and it's like, just luckily to be friends with them. And it's like random yeah. experiences where it's kind of like you meet people along the way and you become friends. And it's not because of like what they are, who they are. It's just like, hey, like you're a cool person to hang out with. Yeah, let's go play golf or have a beer. Yeah, yeah, totally. But. It's, that's the fact that you said that. That's kind of funny. We've literally never played golf together in a, like eleven years of knowing each other. Huh? We've like had countless beers. We've we we've played gone the same, hockey games. We yeah, played yeah, the same yeah. tournaments. We've actually never played around of golf together. We were trying to do some stuff at Streamsong eventually, which we will, and we'll film it for YouTube. But like, it's, it's uh, fucking funny that you just said that because like, yeah, we've actually. That's kind of one of the unique things with professional golfers, I think, unless they're like people you maybe play practice rounds with, you don't play a lot of golf with your buddies on. Yeah, well, my, or less. my view on golf was very bizarre. I went from like kind of frustrated that I had to resort to caddying and was very mad about it to like then accepting my identity as a caddy and then like, all right, I'm going to be a caddy. And then like, you know, I hate golf. I hate playing. So I don't play and play for a while. Yeah, I, I went through that too, for sure. The bug, the bug's gotten me again, but it's more or less like not from a competitive professional standpoint. I've actually got my amateur status back. You have, wow. Yeah. A lot of people on YouTube tell me I should. <laughs> well, I should call yeah. myself a pro because uh, for whatever reasons, because there's a lot of experts out there. Don't right? read so. the comments, man. Like, <laughs> like YouTube 101. No, I um, like reading the comments because I, I I appreciate a good chirp, but if your yeah, chirps are lazy. So. If you're like you fucking retire, dude, do you, have you not watched some videos? Like I, I play a handful of tournaments a year. I make videos. I make like, I don't. think it's give me, give me good chirps and I'll respect that. If you just, if it's lazy, it's just, it's well, maybe water you have off. To start chirping on your comments or something. It's a fuck with you, but, um, <laughs> YouTube comments, you're dead. I, I, I'm not scared of chirping. getting someone's grill. Cause there's some stuff that pisses me off on YouTube, but, um, no, I, 
so now I'm back into playing again and I want to do it more like a competitive mid aim level, but like you realize your limitations as a player and you're like, all right. And I still can play some decent golf, but it's not like at a professional level. And so it's just more fun to, I bring my clubs when I'm domestic side or when I go to Scotland and I have them with me every week and I'll try to play once or twice a week. Really? I can. Damn, yeah. That's kind of cool. And so it's more or less like trying to find the cool, go- a cool golf course in town. That's like under the radar or like, Palm Springs, I probably won't play next week because it's going to be like 115 every single day. So I have no intention of being outside. Yeah. But like, obviously playing Bandon after Portland. And Portland is a bunch of golf to play. Hope like I'm really excited to be back in Portland because I love Portland. Well, of course. So you're like, like you're like the hipster golfer. Not even not even like golf golf wise golfer. though. Like there's like so much good golf in Portland, and like there's even like little pitch and putts that are fun. Yeah. Like getting together yeah, with some of my friends from Jones and playing with them. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people in Portland that are fun to hang out with. Yeah. I mean, you've obviously watched all of Portlandia as well. No, I honestly haven't watched much of Portland. What? I've seen like, I've seen a couple episodes here and there and like, yeah, that's very accurate. Like that's what Portland <laughs> is. Portland's like, I'm not even that cool. I go to Portland and I'm looking at other people. And I'm like, I'm not that cool, man. Just I keep it weird, shit. man. Just keep yeah. it weird. Okay. This, I think we, our conversation has evolved enough. We've been talking for a fucking long time, but that's uh, that's what you get. Yeah. I got a running clock here. That's uh, 48 minutes, just shooting the what shit. If, this is what I could do. This, this I could do this. I could go get another beer and we can make it another hour uh, if you want. You will be a recurring guest, I'm sure, because hearing some of those stories, um, especially as things get back to a bit of normal, I'm sure a lot of you listeners will like to hear some of those stories about caddying and kind of that that side of professional golf where it isn't. <laughs> All uh, glamour and and no. there's times sleep. where I'm wheeling my stuff through like we're sleeping on concrete floor in the Hong Kong airport for six seven hours. Like, we are like, very oh, lucky now in our age that we have found great women to to yes. have married us, to have wed us, and and put up with us, and still trying to be kids and and traveling in that. But we are yes, we're very lucky guys. Uh, Matt, what do you got coming up? Uh, well, speaking of kids, my no. Wife- October 30th. What? I, I literally find this out on my fucking podcast. <laughs> That's happening. And so it's, it's kind of like <laughs> getting everything ready for that and then being ready to handle be a dad. So it's kind of like that's next. Wow. Here that's I am. Next thing I house and have a dog. That's enough. Dear next, I mean, you're, dude, you'll be there in a year or two. Don't, don't you worry. We that's yeah, maybe maybe maybe. <laughs> um, I'll I'll tag just it's Matthew Galloway on Instagram. Yep. Matt's a great follow. Twitter. Don't yep. expect much on Instagram apparently because he's afraid to post stuff. But maybe when you do, it'll be. There's some heat coming. There's some heat coming eventually. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't think it's that good. And then uh, I think when your off season hits proper, we'll we'll definitely because I'm down in Sarasota now a good bit. We'll link we up and then play some golf, film some videos, <laughs> a stream song, and all that good stuff. I'm down. So, Matt, thank you, buddy, for um, being the first guest. Yeah, I'm honored. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I hope um, it wasn't too long-winded for you, but Matt and I, we could sit and shoot the shit for ages. It was really fun catching up with him. And, hey, episode two of On the Number, we get a baby announcement. That's pretty epic. So uh, I really, again, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Expect many more interviews like this to come really good chats with players that maybe you've never heard of or players you have heard of just telling stories um, from life on tour from from struggling to make ends meet to pay the bills Uh, yes i can't thank short par four enough for making this happen like i said earlier you can go check out their website they have a huge us open store going on right now and if you want to join the membership the best membership in golf where they're going to send you a box of curated clothing every single month, different brands, according to your tastes, your fit, your style, everything. You can sign up for short par four link down below and use the code AJ 20 for 20% off your first box. You're already paying basically more than half off what it costs at a store. You're getting huge savings on awesome golf apparel and you don't have to go to the store Short Par 4 is a pretty amazing, amazing experience. And when you are a member, you do have access to the clubhouse. If you're not sure what the clubhouse is, head over to my YouTube channel. Um, We made a video from behind the scenes when the app launched and the clubhouse launched. We had a lot of fun in there. Pool table, ping pong table, basketball court, chipping green, putting green, simulator, bocce ball, 
bar. It, it's got it all. So check it out on my YouTube channel if you want to see what the clubhouse is all about. And if you are a member, you will have access to that clubhouse. So that's enough for uh, episode two of On the Number. Make sure you leave it a comment, favorite it. And if this is up on all your podcast services, give it a five-star review. Leave a comment. Let me know um, what you think and uh, what you want to hear in the future. Thank you very much for being part of this crew. And um, we'll see you in the next podcast.